conventional journalism tends to focus on uh, violence, on drama, on conflict. Conventional journalism, when it bleeds, it leads. Uh, conventional journalism also tends to focus on uh, zero-sum zero -sum scenarios. There has to be a clear winner and a clear loser. Um, yet, peace journalism focuses more on a zero-sum zero -sum, uh, scenario uh, that uh, uh, even, even, even the losers, perceived losers, have, have a point, have, have something that they stand for. Um, conventional journalism also, in most cases, tends to, to focus on elite personalities, elite nations, with little focus on grass, grassroots, uh, grassroots people. Uh, we call that, in actually conventional journalism, the prominence, the prominence value. Um, yet peace journalism focuses on grassroots. Everyone has a role to play, and they, they also have a voice, and that voice ought to be heard. One of the first challenges is related to the aptitudes of the individual journalists. Radio, especially in the global south, is still the, the biggest mass media. And um, the, 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 the owners of radio stations tend to hire untrained people. And when you hire untrained people, they come with a package that they do not appreciate the principles of journalism. They don't know uh, what fairness means, what objectivity means, what uh, uh, balanced reporting should be, uh, what, what being truthful, how, how important to be truthful uh, it is. Um, so that's, that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is related with the institutional and the structural factors. And what I mean by that is the ownership of the media uh, in the global south. When you look at the radio stations, especially in my country, Uganda, for instance, but I also know in other parts of, 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 of Africa, radio stations are owned mainly by politicians. And what that means is the framing of issues is going to be uh, on the agenda of the, of, the, of the politicians, of the ruling party in most cases, rarely giving voice to uh, the opposition, for instance, or alternative voices. And any journalist, even if they are very good, but they are employed by uh, politicians, uh, naturally they are going to frame issues and promote the agenda of their employers. So that's challenge number two. The final challenge that I see is related with what I would call extra media factors. Uh, that is to do with um, you know, uh, advertisers and, uh, and, and other stakeholders um, who, in most cases, may not be interested in promoting an agenda that is towards common ground that is towards building communal harmony. And uh, because that is what they're interested in, um, the journalists tend to frame issues to respond to what audiences, perceived audiences like. And what the people, you know, those perceived audiences tend to like is usually conflict, things that are very dramatic. The media has a very big role uh, in promoting social cohesion in societies. Uh, first of all, by, uh, by making sure that um, they give voice to peacemakers, um, uh, to grassroots organizations that are working towards promotion of communal harmony and, uh, and promotion of dialogue, uh, uh, grassroots media. communities of women and uh, communities of, of youth. There are very many of these organizations, civil society organizations, that are working towards 
promoting communal harmony and, uh, and dialogue and common ground. These are the, 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 the voices that, that should be heard other than uh, giving voice all the time to politicians uh, who tend actually to promote, um, to promote uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, conflict and, uh, and uh, you know, p putting um, uh, you know, various communities against each other. 